knowing that there was so much footage of Dr. Ruth in the 80s and 90s and that the stories that we're animating are from the 30s and the 40s. And so the question as a filmmaker was how do I illustrate that? Our team found Neko, and they're from all over the world, which is just sort of fortuitous, of bringing the globalism of Dr. Ruth's story into the animation styles. To use animation in this piece was a brilliant idea because animation is an incredible tool to give us her point of view from her mind's eye, from reality to memory. There's a big lens in the middle of emotion. And so what we discussed with the style was to recreate the look of a German storybook from that time. She had kept all of her diaries from her childhood. What I didn't want to do is make her childhood impersonal. So every detail was in many ways dictated by her memory when she read those diaries. What I think Ask Dr. Ruth is most successful in doing is the portrayal of Ruth's character. We needed to create different phases of Dr. Ruth's life, and we needed to stay very close to reality and the way she looked at that time. Exactly like everyone in her life looked like. We took the storyboards and we worked with the actors, and there's a great deal of subtlety in the performances and the animation, and so every shot needs to have a lot of human layers in it. And so Dr. Ruth was really involved making sure that the things that we brought to life were brought to life accurately. And so one of the best parts about finally getting to show the film is how happy Dr. Ruth is. She came to us and she was so happy that we brought her life and her family back to life. The animation allows her to watch her childhood without having to relive it. 